welcome to um, Discovering Your God-Given Gifts on this morning. We are going to be um, continuing in talking about uh, if I have a gift, why haven't I known it? And we'll go back and recap on some of the obstacles and some of the hindrances, things that typically, I guess, um, cloud our mind or gets in the way of us being able to um, really um, turn the, our gifts uh, over to God. I was just saying earlier uh, that God so graciously gives us the gifts that we possess, um, and he's waiting on us to uh, really offer our gifts back to him so that um, in turn his super um, then um, collides with our natural abilities to be able to operate in the fullness of God, in the fullness of what he has designed, uh, what he has purposed, and what he has created um, you know, us to do. And so we thank God um, for that. We're going to go into prayer on this morning and we'll jump right on back into the lesson um, for today. Father God, we bless your name and we thank you, Lord God, for this is the day, Lord God, that you've made, Lord God, a day that's full, Father God, full of opportunities, Father God, for us, Father God, to indulge, Father God, in the good life, oh Lord God, to indulge in the abundant life that you have set out for us. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you that you watched over us all night long, oh Lord God, and that you brought us again, Father God, to the beginning of a new day. So we thank you, Lord God, for this day, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit and your presence, oh Lord God. We ask right now that you come in, Father God, that you sit with us, Father God, and rest on our hearts, Father God, on this morning, Father God, as we, Father God, learn of your word, Father God, that will stir each of us up, that will stir us up in our giftings, oh Lord God. We bless you for it. We pray for the service on today, Lord God. We say have your way in every classroom on this wing, Father God, on, in this building, Father God. We pray right now that your presence, Father God, is even hovering heavily, Father God, in the sanctuary on this morning, Lord God. Allow Allow your word to be released freely, Lord God, so that it may, Father God, penetrate the hearts of the people that enter the doors on today. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. So on um, last week, we were just discussing, um, we talked about um, the hindrances and the, the things that um, typically will block the flow of you coming um, into contact, if you will, um, of, uh, of knowing, and sometimes it can be um, hindered and pierced and stopped at the very beginning if we're not aware of, of, of Satan and his plans. You, you understand what I'm saying? And so it, it comes for um, even our identity. Um, you know, people um, have a tendency of, of, you know, experiencing, good morning, good morning. of experiencing um, spiritual setbacks early. Um, in life, they have identity crisis. Um, they have trauma that happens to them in their childhood. And so we talked about those things as well being things that uh, will sometimes hinder us from moving forward into the things that we know that God has called us um, into. And then we can get into situations where we begin to become comfortable with just being, um, you, know, um, at, you know, at a norm, if you will, just settling. Um, you know, we um, become familiar with the settled spirit, if you will. Well, oh, I'll just take a back seat um, to that, or oh, I'll just, um, you know, I'll just wait. It doesn't, you know, feel like the timing is right. Um, but then we know again, with God, all things are possible, and God calls everything into time, into motion. Praise God, glory to God. And so we have to seek God. We have to seek after His presence. We have to seek Him so that we can become fully aware of what it is that he has placed in our hands, what assignment he has given to us to be able to operate in daily. And so that's when we get to the point where we've discussed at various stages and various times, you become aware of a gift. And then as you grow in your relationship with God, you become aware of another gift of operation that has sprung up on the inside of you. Um, then you become closer, if you will. That gift begins to, to, to manifest, uh, you know, within your heart. And then it's dis displayed um, as part of your character, part of who you are. And then you become more and more connected to your God-given gift. You become passionate about that thing. You start to feel passion well up 
on the inside of you. Um, and it's that relationship and knowing, being able to be able to use, um, you know, discernment, if you will. And discernment, believe it or not, it's one of the gifts, it's one of the things that we all, you know, have access to. Uh, but unfortunately, some, some people are not aware of how to actually access discernment. And you really access it through your relationship with Christ through the power of prayer. When you ask God to lead and guide you in and out, situations and circumstances, just as we talked about this morning at the start, you know, before we even started class this morning, um, you know, Brother Jim and I, we was just talking, you know, just in general about how um, you know that God has rescued you <laughs> um, from out of some situations and away from some things. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's just that I don't know what made me do it type thing. Remember I say sometimes you have that quickening on the inside of you, the activation of the spirit on the inside of you, and you may not have made that uh, you know, connection because of all the other things that we have decided to put our attention to, but he's still there. He still makes us aware of dangers, seen and unseen. Am I right about it? And so um, we have to be cautious and um, careful. So there's a lot of things that will try to, um, you know, get us off course or pull us away from what we know God is calling us to do. Any comments? Yeah. So we have to, um, you know, we have to um, just kind of know, I guess, um, be patient and listen to the voice in the direction of God and at the same time um, be steadfast in the faith um, that you know that you know once you receive salvation there's benefits that's attached to that and as you grow in your relationship with Christ as you grow to begin to know who he is and fully see that he is operating in your life because once you encounter once you come into contact with the Holy Spirit your life is just not the same you understand what I'm saying? Just one moment, <laughs> just one moment with Jesus Christ, just one moment of worship, it grips, you know, it grips that very, you know, it grips your heart, if you will. Um, and it, you know, it really feeds your spirit. It's, you know, it's, it's really hard to say on the, I mean, on the soulish factor, I mean, you feel good. You know that your body, you know, temperature could change, and you know that you feel, might even feel a little lightheaded, or whatever the case may be in the natural that you feel when you know that you are in the presence of God. But being in the presence of God, it's like your spirit. Your spirit is encountering. Spirit to spirit. And sometimes it's just so unexplainable. That's why, you know, you've heard the term, you know, I, oh, I was just slain in the, you know, I was just slain in the spirit. <laughs> I didn't know, I wasn't aware, you know, we've got all the things that we know that typically we may, you know, be aware of. But then, you know, when you're in the spirit, you're not aware of natural things that's going on around you. Because you're in the presence of glory. You're in the presence of almighty God. And there's nothing that can even... I mean, it's even hard to even try to stand before you to even describe this morning. And you may have your own, you know, thought processes and feelings about your first encounter with God, but you know that you can't, you know, there's probably nothing that you can even think of that has happened. And we're various ages in this room, you know, but I'm saying I'm pretty sure that, you know, when you think about, about when you look back over your life, and you know that God has brought you through some things, have brought you, you know what I'm saying, has, has delivered you from some things. Mm -hmm. Come on here. Mm -hmm. You know that it was nobody but God. But God. Mm -hmm. And so there's even, you know, again, the giftings of the manifestation of his spirit to be able to rest, rule, and abide within us in itself is the most precious gift. He said, I'm not gonna leave you without the comforter. He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, which endows us, which lives within us, which, you know, which is, you know, it's our very presence, if you will, or the very, being in the very presence of God in itself. I was looking for our scripture with, um, 
with that. And we've had it, um, and we've, you know, we've, we've gone over it, um, you know, we've gone over it before. And we've also said that our gift was built into us when God formed us. So he was even thinking about how, how Lady April was going to operate before Lady April even took her first breath. Mm. That's just how intimate he was with us before we was even formed in the body. He was already assigning, you see what I'm saying, gifts and, and destinies. Yes, Jeremiah 29, yeah, yeah, Jeremiah 29, 11 says it. We can also read Psalm 1, the, you know, the old Psalm of 139, and it tells us about how he inter, you know, intricately designed and crafted and made us, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So our giftedness, what he has given to us, is not an afterthought. It was a part of God's plan to shape us for our role in building his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And we're all going to come to various assignments, if you will, as we grow and as we become more familiar with the presence of God and the gifts that he has endowed us with on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. So what is our assignment daily? that we need to do, just, you know, let's just talk about that. What is our assignment that we need to make sure that we are, I guess, um, looking after daily? What is our assignment? Or what does that mean to you when you think about your daily assignment and you think about the gifts that you know God has given to you? Gifts that you've operated in before and you've had the realization and you know they exist or even maybe a new place, a new assignment that, uh, you, know, a, you know, a new, if you will, um, destiny point in, on the road that you know God is leading you to. How do you, how do you bring that into your day? I know the word tells me in John's gospel that we're to draw nigh to God. And mm -hmm. when we do that in spirit and in truth, Mm -hmm. That comes when we worship. When we, mm -hmm. And like you were saying, the closer we are to him, the more the Holy Spirit fans that flame in us and the more we are at unity and oneness, mm -hmm. one heart, one mind, one mm -hmm. accord, mm -hmm. then he reveals himself more and more. Because yeah. Jesus said the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he'll take a mind. And show it to you. Yeah. So, wow. mm -hmm. like you said, the closer we get, and I know it, my in my own personal life, it's like the closer you are to a fire, uh -huh. the warmer the flames fan, and the further you get away from Christ, the colder Come on. <laughs> spiritually you grow. Mm -hmm. Been there. Right. Right. That's right. how it works. Right. Right. That's how it works. So, in essence, it's about the time. You know, it's about the time that you spend, that you initially um, make that decision to consciously be aware of the fact that every day we ought to give God mm -hmm. our time. Mm -hmm. We ought to give God some attention. That in itself can go hundreds, you know, of ways. We could, you know, park there and talk about all, you know, yeah. talk about what we ought, you know, what we ought to do. But then there's something unique and special about when you know when you're spending this time with God in devotion, when you're spending time with God in your worship, and when you're spending time with God just to say, God, I'm just going to sit and I'm just going to listen. I just want to sit here and I just want to hear the voice of God. I want to know that my spirit is plugged up, Father God, to yours because I've purposely made up my mind that I'm going to sit here and I'm going to worship you in silence. Didn't we talk about that one week? We talk about, you know, how we know that we ought to be still and sit still and, you know, but sometimes it's just that, you know, the waiting season mm -hmm. that really, you know, gets to us and make us antsy or whatever. We may not see everything or know everything that's going on because we cannot channel God's thoughts and his ways. We know that they're higher. We know that they're higher, um, but it's just that waiting and when we can't see God or when we can't trace God, it's up to us to believe and know in our heart that he's still working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on here. 
He is still working on your behalf. Why? Because of your faith. Because of your devotion. Because of your time. So we all want to offer God. Offer him that sacrifice, if you will, of praise. And then if you don't know the gift, or if you're not fully operating in the gift, that is the time to sit yourself still to say, God, what is it that you would have me to do in this season? Show me, lead me by your Holy Spirit, Father God. Allow that person that's supposed to cross my path, or I'm crossing their path, or however we look at that thing, but allow us to be able to connect today. I want to share your word with someone on the day. How many times do we just sit and say, you know what, God, send someone. I have a testimony. How are we getting our testimonies out? 